Welcome back to Make Workshop, where we check out tools, toys, and tech built for makers. Today, we're going to be looking at a dual filament 3D printer. It's got some other tricks up its sleeve, too. This is the LotMax SC10 Shark, version 2. Uh, last year, we saw a whole bunch of videos of people that were getting version 1 and trying it out after a Kickstarter. And now they're selling version 2, which has been updated, it has a few differences, and we didn't get a chance to look at version 1, so we're happy to play with version 2. Just for clarity, LotMax did not sponsor this video. They did send the machine for us to look at, but we ultimately don't keep most of the machines that come through the workshop. Let's talk about specs. As far as printing size goes, this has roughly 250 millimeter by 250 millimeter by about 265 millimeter work envelope. Uh, the standout features of this machine are, of course, the fact that it has two extruders that feed through this one hot end. You've got an extruder right here, and then you, it may be kind of hard to see, but there's an additional extruder mounted up here. Other features that it has are kind of the things you've come to expect from a modern 3D printer. Things like, you know, of course, a heated bed, a removable flexible print sheet with a nice textured surface on it. I actually really like, you know, removable flexible sheets as you've probably heard me go on about many times in the past. I am very happy with removable flexible sheets, and I can't imagine working without one. They have filament runout sensors, dual gear extruders, all kinds of wonderful stuff. I also have to commend LotMax on their industrial design. I really like kind of how everything is packaged up very nicely and neatly. It feels like a, a quality product. You know, it's got these kind of folded steel brackets and even the underside of the machine, everything is encased. Let me see if I can do this without dropping it. Everything is encased quite nicely, you can see there. One criticism, if I were to uh, have one about the design, is that there's no real cable management for things like the second extruder. Um, you kind of just have these cables dangling out here, and I don't have an easy solution to offer them. I guess I can zip tie it around this side and up there. And they do supply zip ties, so you can do it nice and pretty on your own. The software that comes with it is based off of Cura, and you can load in your files and print multicolor prints out of the box. And that's pretty cool. They also have an additional feature on this machine. That is the fact that you can swap out the hot end for a laser engraver, a diode-based laser engraver. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. There was a little bit of assembly required out of the box. You have to mainly mate the two big pieces of the frame together and then mount the second extruder. But aside from those simple things, it really is pretty much ready to go. Out of the box, the bed was wobbly, but I have to commend LotMax on this. On their website, they have a list of resources, and in those resources are video tutorials, and they covered a lot of things. For example, they clearly showed how to get rid of any wiggle that may have worked into your bed during shipping. So good job, LotMax, on that. Once it's all put together, you're pretty much ready to go. There are test files on the card that ships with it, and you can immediately throw filament on it that it ships with and print a multicolored object, like this little dragon holding a heart. The interface on this machine, it's kind of neat. It's on this external uh, little housing. And I actually like the interface. LotMax did a pretty good job of uh, making everything clearly labeled and making it easy to navigate around the interface. I like it a lot. There are a few things that I would like to see um, that I would enjoy more that are missing here. Like some printers have you know, a preview of the file uh, and that would be kind of neat, but overall I actually like their interface. It's simple to use and it kind of makes sense on where the buttons are and they're clearly labeled. The machine does have automatic bed leveling with a BL touch. You can go and, and do the automatic bed level, but it's um, separate from the actual print. On some machines, you know, you hit print and it levels and then it prints. On this, you kind of level the bed first 
and then do your prints. They're kind of separate. No big deal. Just took a little bit of getting used to getting started on it. As far as print quality goes, well, it's fine. It's an acceptable level of print quality. You can see on the dragon that I printed initially that came on the card that the layers look great. There's no real blobbiness or stringiness between it. Uh, the, the layer separation or the layers aren't separating or anything and the colors are not bleeding into each other or overlapping. I tried slicing one myself as well. I found this multicolored dice and sliced that up at a different layer height than their uh, uh, included files and it printed okay. I had some issues with the purge tower where it cleans the nozzle in between color changes. Uh, breaking loose and that I believe affected the print quality, but even so it turned out acceptable With some tinkering you could probably get some really beautiful prints out of this machine Did you know that make has an online store? We call it the maker shed and it's packed full of toys uh, soldering educational kits books even back issues of the magazine. We've got all kinds of awesome stuff. Let me give you an example this time of year, one of our best selling kits is the compressed air rocket launcher system. You make these cool rockets and you use compressed air to shoot them hundreds of feet in the air. Check down below for a link to that kit and just browse around the store and check it out. I promise you're going to like it. Let's talk about lasering. The previous version uh, of the of the tiger looked like it had a way for the laser to mount next to the extruder here so that it could kind of always be on the machine. This version you have to physically remove your extruder and mount it up here and if you're going to mount it here you're going to have to like disconnect cables and wires and stuff and I ended up just draping it over here whenever I was playing with the laser and not bothering mounting it here. Um, a, a quick change would be nice or even just a little bracket or something to just clip it on to would be nice, but hey, you know, it's a 3D printer. I can design and, and print maybe something that bolts on here that just holds whatever I'm not using while I'm not using it. To use the laser, you take this off, you mount your laser here, and you mount an additional box down here that interfaces with the electronics, and that causes everything to switch over to laser mode. The interface on the controller changes, and you then can control your laser. I have to say, my experience with the laser wasn't amazing. Maybe I'm spoiled from playing with CO2 lasers. You know, they're more powerful. Typically, their software is more robust. The software on this is extremely simple, which can be good. Um, you know, you don't have a whole lot of things to mess with, but they're not necessarily clearly labeled. The videos explain a little bit, like a tiny bit of how to use it, but, you know, you have things like uh, your power has a work and a dot setting and a number next to it, but you don't know what the numbers mean. And in the manual, it says lower numbers are stronger, but when I changed the numbers, it was really hard to tell. Anyway, the point is, if you're willing to tinker with it, you can probably get some decent lasering out of it. But don't expect this to be a workhorse laser that's going to give you the highest quality. It's not marketed as that either, so you really shouldn't be surprised. This machine is available right now on their website for $499. Not a bad price for a machine that has some decent industrial design and, you know, the dual extruders built in. I think that's quite nice. You can find a link to their website down below. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and click subscribe for more videos from this channel.